Hi, I'm Andy Bound, Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. We wanted to spend some time today sharing how we've implemented the new advising model on three campuses and the importance of faculty and professional advisor collaborations for student success. The idea for this new model came from faculty feedback during the fall 2014 provost visits. During these visits, faculty discussed the desire to connect with students sooner and wanted to develop stronger collaborations with Academic Advising Center advisors. Following this feedback, the Academic Advising Committee was formed to review the current model and discuss areas for improvement. After researching current retention literature and discussing the different advising model options, three campuses were chosen to pilot a new advising structure. The model that was chosen was the best fit for Ivy Tech, was one where students could connect with faculty during their first semester, and both academic advisors and faculty could collaborate by using Ivy Advising for notes and appointments. After a year of review, the new model was unanimously approved by the Vice Chancellors of Academic Affairs, the Vice Chancellors of Student Affairs, and the Chancellors during the spring of 2017. Good advising is vital to the long-term success of Ivy Tech. The advisor is the link between the student and the institution. Our success, after all, depends on the success of our students. Retention literature stresses the importance of first-year advising and front-loading advising help. Advisors can play a key role in helping students adjust to the environment, clarifying expectations, and interpreting the higher education experience to their advisees. Perhaps an advisor's greatest contribution to retention and success may be in reducing initial student confusion, strengthening the connection to the college, and in guiding students through their experience. So now let's hear how the model is working on our pilot campuses. Hi, I'm Jody Beatty, former Director of Academic Advising and current Vice Chancellor for Student Success at the Sellersburg campus. One of the benefits that our academic advising team experienced under the new model is a fuller understanding of the academic curricula and a student's path to graduation. So this really wasn't possible when we advised and stopped at 15 credit hours. This understanding not only helps us serve students better, but it also helps us provide more meaningful feedback to faculty chairs when they're seeking input about course schedules. Another benefit that we've experienced is uh, the ability to do more completion initiatives. So for example, every semester our advisors run audits on students who have earned 45 credit hours or more to determine what they need to do to complete in a timely manner. They then reach out to the students and record their notes in Ivy Advising so that all members of the team are on the same page. We still have challenges to overcome, but we are working with the faculty to overcome these. Um, I think that our campus really understands the importance of collaboration between faculty and advisors to ensure student success. We're really grateful to the deans, chairs, and faculty who have partnered with us to make this new model work. Academic advising is a difficult skill. There's a lot to it. By having a, a group of professional advisors here on our campus, they're able to, over time, uh, refine that skill. Uh, they're able to perfect that craft. And then when uh, they need a content expert to assist them, then they can bring in uh, a faculty member, uh, a dean, an administrator, who can then work with the student to provide um, content expertise. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the advisor, the professional advisor, and the faculty member can sort of uh, tag team the students, right? If uh, the faculty member is not on campus or if the professional advisor uh, is not on campus, then there is someone else there to, to support the student. The student knows that he or she has uh, two individuals that uh, can provide information. Also, uh, the faculty advisor and the uh, professional advisor, they can learn from one, one another. So there's, there's a lot that I've been able to pick up from the professional advisors when I sit and listen to, to them and how they uh, approach a student and the questions that they ask 
and I'm sure the, tr uh, the same is also true uh, going the other direction. Hi, my name is Amber Harnack. I'm the director of the Academic Advising Center at the Terre Haute campus. We are just finishing up our first full year with the new advising model. As a pilot region, our Academic Advising Center advisors and our faculty advisors are continuing to build strong relationships that assist with student development and also assist our students in reaching their educational, career, and academic goals. Some of the things that we've been able to do with the new advising model uh, are actually have our academic advisors invited to advisory committee meetings with our faculty. So they're able to participate in those meetings and learn more about job trends, uh, learn about where students are getting jobs when they graduate from Ivy Tech, learn more about the professions that they're advising for. So it's giving them those opportunities to then have more in-depth conversations with students as they meet with them. Uh, our advisors in the Academic Advising Center are also being, being invited by faculty to participate in different events within the programs like welding competitions or actually going out to observe surgeries uh, within the hospital. So as they continue to build their knowledge base for these programs, they become more in-depth advisors and have the ability to share more information with students to help them make great decisions as they uh, come into our office and as they're able to build their academic and career plans with us. We also, through this process, have utilized technology, uh, refreshing our skills in IV advising, making sure that we're all utilizing it to its fullest capacity, giving our faculty advisors and our academic advisors the opportunity to learn more about the students they're meeting with and the conversations that they may have had uh, with an advisor in the advising center or with a faculty advisor. So we're continuing training and continuing to refresh ourselves in IV advising each semester to make sure that we're utilizing it again to its full capacity. So as this first full year comes to a close, we're continuing with our faculty advisors and academic advising center advisors to build those strong relationships so that we can better assist our students as we move into the future. I wanted to comment today on the new IV advising model and things associated with building student relationships and, and uh, so forth. I think it's important that we establish as many avenues of contact uh, and as many strong relationships with our students as possible. Um, so I use Ivy Advising in a number of ways. Uh, and I think one area that's underutilized is giving kudos uh, to our students who are doing well. So I try to do that on a regular basis and it's generally got me positive feedback. Hi, I'm Carol Bowron, past director of academic advising at the Valparaiso campus and now currently the registrar at the Lake County campus. At the Valparaiso campus, we already had some pieces in place before we began implementing the new advising model, which helped to facilitate and solidify the relationship between the academic advisors and the faculty advisors. The academic advisors were assigned to students by program and divisions and were working alongside their program faculty. Our schedule building process includes input from the academic advisors and the advisors and program chairs were already meeting to review the course schedule before each registration period opened. These meetings are still ongoing and the academic advisor suggestions help to develop a strong course offering each semester. At the start of the new advising model, all new students were assigned both an academic advisor and a faculty advisor. The continuing students who had an, a faculty advisor assigned were also assigned an academic advisor. I was concerned that ad, assigning an academic advisor to the continuing students might be confusing to them, but we found that not to be the case. The continuing students who had established a relationship with their faculty advisor continued to work with the faculty advisor, and they also found that they had the support of the academic advising center when the faculty were not available. The advising model is based on a teamwork approach for student support. We see that in action when faculty are on break or when an academic advisor is unexpectedly out of the office and the faculty advisor steps in to meet with a student who had an advising appointment scheduled. We are also seeing more collaborative efforts between the academic and the faculty advisors to improve retention and completion rates in each of their programs. So I will say, when it first came out, some of the 
the fears that I had were similar to what we had talked about, that I would lose uh, access and control to my folks, um, which I'm sure I'm like anybody else. I'm very particular about my cohort, and I want access to them. Um, and what I have found is it's been the exact opposite. I have not lost control. I have not lost touch or contact or communication. Uh, if anything, it's been better. Um, it's been better because the parts of Ivy Tech that I am not an expert at, of uh, financial aid and, and, and just college type questions, um, the advisors have done a great job uh, giving the student those resources, either through themselves or through other people in the office. Um, and when it gets to EMS specific, uh, EMT paramedic uh, questions, then they have been very good about passing them off to me. Uh, and so that has uh, kind of really made the experience better uh, overall. Um, on top of that, my advisors have come to info sessions um, where they meet new students that we may or may not have even known were interested. Um, they come to my advisory board uh, where they can meet all of the, I, I include all seven counties. So I actually even include our competition. So the hospital-based programs are invited uh, because I think it's important that we get everyone in the same room. Um, and our goal is to increase the educational standards. Um, and so they've been a good part of that. Uh, and again, they bring to the table uh, an expertise that I don't have. So when people ask questions, maybe the EMS chief from Valpo uh, asks questions about the college or college protocol, if it's something that I can't answer, it's nice to have that expert there that can answer the question. Um, so overall, it has been a very positive experience. Uh, there have some, some of the negatives that I thought might happen have not happened. Uh, so I'm happy. Hi, I'm Susan Hawkins Wilding, Assistant Vice President for Academic Advising. I'm excited to see how the new model will impact student success on our campuses. We have begun to create new reports to track student success through advising interactions. Currently, we can evaluate advising flags, appointments, and basic academic plan information. Our goal is to see how fall to spring and fall to fall persistence is impacted through interactions with advisors. We also want to use advising flags, credit hours completed, and academic plan success as measures of student success. Our new strategic plan and related initiatives will allow us to build on these efforts and create leading indicators for advisors to track student progress. The research literature on advising and retention concludes that college student success improves when students make progress towards educational and career goals and when they are satisfied with the quality of educational programs, services, and environment. Academic advising at Ivy Tech plays a significant role in addressing these factors. In short, good academic advising can be a key to student retention. The best way to keep students enrolled is to keep them stimulated, challenged, and progressing towards a meaningful goal. One way to do that, especially with new students, is through meaningful academic advising. First year students can feel overwhelmed by the college experience. The reality is that many new students have trouble coping with so many new experiences. Even good academic preparation does not always equip students to persist and succeed academically. Attitude and motivation are powerful predictors of student success. Most students don't come to the college knowing how to make academic decisions. They have to learn this. Our new model helps us to strengthen our collaborations with each other and allows us greater opportunities to provide learning experiences for our students. As we create and evaluate our new model and initiatives, we will share our student success data with you. Please don't hesitate to provide me or your academic advising directors with feedback and or questions as we implement the new model by fall of 2018.